so I watched this video and I was flabbergasted, not by the, the main thing. I think what you would think I would be so bamboozled by. I love that word. What a great word. I quit carnivore and my heart health got worse by Lily Kane. She is a carnivore promoter. She eats or has eaten a carnivore-ish diet. So essentially from August 2021 to August 2023, I had mainly just been eating meat, fish, dairy, and a piece of fruit. And she had some problems, some scalp issues. This whole time my scalp has still been itchy. And because it's itchy, then when I scratch it, things will flake off. My blood work showed that my ferritin levels were elevated. So she started adding in some vegetables, still eating an animal-based, as she calls it. So she moved from carnivore-ish to animal-based with more fruits and vegetables, no grains, I don't think. After three years of eating a carnivore-ish diet, this is what my cardiac health panel looked like last year. And now for this past year, eating more of an animal-based diet, having more fruits and vegetables, this is what my cardiac health panel looks like. Here's her ApoB moderate. You want it under 100, 110, you know, different labs say different things. This says 89 and her LDL is 132. Those are the two main factors that experts, that doctors are concerned about when it comes to your heart health. So that was on the carnivore-ish diet. And then we get to the animal-based diet and it's even worse. Her LDL jumps to 214, her ApoB 158. Should she go back on a carnivore diet? No, pretty much any doctor, any researcher would tell her, no, absolutely not. You need to cut your animal products further. You need to cut your saturated fat further. I think they also maybe would be skeptical about what she's actually eating, what she's actually been eating over the last year, how much saturated fat she's actually been eating. She says she's barely eaten any butter. But again, if we look at her animal-based meals, like they are definitely animal-based. I assumed that's eggs. Carnivore meals, we're not supposed to yuck people's yum. This is fucking disgusting. How is that a meal? How is that something you eat that is the saddest shit? But yeah, this is some like beef, like this is not low in saturated fat by any means. I don't even... I don't, what, what, what is that? You know, it's funny that honestly looks like some like weird vegan chicken. <laughs> like even the broccoli's sad, like it has color, but somehow it doesn't. It's like the nasty beef and mystery meat just suck all the color out of the broccoli <laughs> and just punt it away. Point is consensus is that this is not great, particularly if your labs look like this. Now, some may say, well, she's young, she's slim, she exercises, she's probably at a very low risk for heart disease despite her lipid panel, which sure, like for now, right? Pretty much every young person is at very little risk. But studies appear to show a link between heart disease at an older age and LDL at a younger age, suggesting the damage we do to our arteries at 20 years old, 30 years old, 10 years old. It matters. It's cumulative. Now to give her, Lily, some credit, she's not like diehard carnivore at all. I mean, again, look, she's eating broccoli. She's eating an apple. I love that the peel is gone though. Is that like a carnivore thing? Is that where all the bad things are? Are there lectins in the peel? She seems more open-minded and she's open to, you know, eating at least some amount of plants and she's just, you know, trying to be healthy and trying to do what she thinks is the healthiest way to eat. As I would do more interviews with guests, they would say things to me, off camera, like this is just getting a little bit ridiculous, this whole carnivore policeness thing, they would say, Lily, I will just film my food and then turn off the camera and stop recording and then add my seasonings and the hot sauce to my meats. And I was like, oh, so you hide and stuff. Influencers would say, if people ask, I'll say, yes, I have coffee, but otherwise I'm not gonna show and like highlight that I have coffee in my day. I'm also happy to see that she doesn't just wave away the LDL and the ApoB. She is concerned about it, which is great. Unfortunately, it is common within the carnivore group and keto and paleo to believe that the cholesterol numbers don't really matter, that it's more about HDL and triglycerides. As long as your HDL is high and your triglycerides are low, then you're good. Unfortunately, there are so many doctors, people like Paul Saladino out there who are telling people, yeah, eat mostly animals and animal byproducts, that this is a good thing to do for your health, including the doctor she speaks to in this video about her blood work, Dr. Salt, 
and this will lead us into the main reason I wanted to make this video. It's just crazy. First, Dr. Salt tells her to keep doing what she's doing. She ends up talking about inflammation mostly and markers of inflammation and says that, well, lilies look good. She's like moving in the right direction. Again, like doctors would be very concerned about her lipids. But Dr. Salt, Dr. Sabrina Salt is a carnivore doctor, keto slash carnivore, it says here on her Instagram. Oh, and she's wife to carnivore. Oh my God, she's married married to a carnivore bro, a carnivore diet coach. Oh, okay. Here's his uh, food pyramid. Cool. Anyway, Dr. Salt says something towards the end here. I'm going to rewatch it just to make sure I'm not crazy because it's kind of crazy. I started thinking about this because of, you know, where I'm at in my journey, I, you know, over two and a half years into the carnivore diet. I almost want to say that the most successful carnivore diet a person can be on is the one that they graduate from. Like that you've actually gotten your body to a point where you have healed and now something like broccoli doesn't hurt you. Shouldn't you be in a place where you could handle that if needed? Yes. That's, I think, where we can all agree. Yeah, I think we all can agree there. Everyone should be able to eat broccoli without pain, I think. And to be fair, elimination diets are a real thing that doctors will work with you if you need to be on them for various reasons. And yeah, the goal there is to be able to first figure out your trigger foods, the foods that are bothering you, and then ultimately, hopefully, be able to reintroduce those foods into your diet. Not always possible, but sometimes it is. So as much as I hate a carnivore diet, and it is not used as an elimination diet, if that's how people see it, right? If it's just a short-term thing that you can move out of, that is so much better than attempting to do this long-term. Not to say that carnivore is not useful. I love it. I prefer it. It's easiest for me, but for other people that are out there that may want more variety or maybe it isn't sustainable for them or whatever reason it is that they want to graduate from that, I think that that should be a thing that makes you successful too, not just this idea of being purist. And why do you want to graduate? Is it for variety purposes? Is it for, is there certain blood markers that you got that you were thinking that you could optimize with some more plants? I actually just drew some labs yesterday for a couple of things that I was concerned with. So depending on what comes back there, I may have more to say on it, but I actually had some concerning stuff pop up personally with my gum health and some very easy bruising. And people are going to be like, scurvy is impossible. I'm like, well, if you saw the bruises on my legs and the receding gums that have happened over just the last eight months, it was concerning. It was concerning enough for me to be like, let me take a deeper look at this because this isn't supposed to happen. Do something for as long as it works, but if it stops working, reevaluate. That needs to just be in people's heads. Don't be dogmatic just to be like in a group or accepted by a thing. Like if I have to start adding a vitamin C tablet, cool. I will, I will take the vitamin C and I'm not gonna be hung up on it. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Where do I start? Number one. Yes, absolutely. Again, she does not seem super dogmatic. That's fantastic. She saw that there was a problem and she's not just running away from it because no, you can't be vitamin C deficient on carnivore, right? If you just eat the right meats, then you're fine. But also we have a doctor who is surprised that she possibly got scurvy from not eating foods containing vitamin C. What the fuck? That's almost worse than the doctors who are like anti-vax or promoting, you know, delayed vaccine schedules. Like this is, it's, everyone knows this. It would be one thing if she wanted to try, if she wanted to test these theories that you can eat carnivore and avoid a vitamin C deficiency, if she wanted to test it, that would be one thing. But as she says, she she's surprised. Let me take a deeper look at this because this isn't supposed to happen. That's like a 20 year vegan being surprised they have a B12 deficiency when they have not supplemented with B12 for 20 years. Wait a minute, is she a doctor or is she... It did say MD, didn't it? It's in MD. Do you know what in MD stands for? She's a naturopath. Okay. You know what? I feel better. I feel so much better. She's just a naturopath. Yes, they can call themselves doctors. They are not doctors. They are not MDs. Even the most highly educated naturopaths get only a fraction of the training that physicians get. Postgraduate training is neither common nor required of graduates of naturopathic schools. Medical literature indicates that less than 10% of naturopaths participate in an improved residency, and such residencies last only a year and lack a high degree of standardization. Compare this with physicians who complete four years of medical 
medical school, followed by a minimum of three and as many as seven years of residency. All of that is preceded by the four years it typically takes to earn a bachelor's. In addition, whereas naturopaths are required to get at least 1,200 hours of direct patient contact, physicians get 12,000 to 16,000 hours of clinical training, at least 10 times more than that minimum. The very worldview of naturopathy is rooted in vitalism, the idea that there is a life force that living creatures and plants have that non-living matter does not. Not only does naturopathy embrace the one quackery to rule them all, homeopathy, it devotes considerable hours to homeopathy in the curriculum of naturopathy school, and it includes it on the INPLEX, the naturopathic licensure examination. So tight is the embrace of homeopathy by many naturopaths that one was recently investigated for using a homeopathic remedy made from the saliva of a rabid dog to treat a child. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. A naturopath not being surprised by scurvy, much less of a blow than an actual doctor being surprised by that. Although again, we have Paul Saladino. There's some other too. There's some other like carnivore MDs. Unfortunately, MDs aren't immune to all this either. Again, I don't want to come down too hard on these ladies. They both seem really nice. They both seem like they're trying to be unbiased, trying to be healthy. And I'm sure they did have some health issues prior to going carnivore or carnivore-ish that were cleared up by a carnivore diet. Again, if we go back to elimination diet, a lot of the most common allergies and foods that just cause issues for people are eliminated when you go on a carnivore diet. But it's just amazing to see so many people roped into this as a long-term solution, maybe not carnivore strictly, but animal-based, you know, eating lots of meat. You know, look at Paul Saladino's current diet. He's eating a good amount of fruit, yeah, but he's still eating so much meat and avoiding so many foods that we know are really good for us. Again, unless you have an allergy, of course, but like oats, man, you don't eat any oats. <laughs> oats are so good. Flax seeds, holy shit. You're missing out on some of the healthiest foods in the world. I, it just, I don't know. It makes me sad. And of course, all the animals who have to suffer for this, and that's not what this video is about, but you know, I am a natural vegan and that is my chief concern. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You know, if you go on a, on a meat-based diet, there's a, a much higher chance you're going to end up with scurvy. <laughs> if you eat mostly plants or even just a, a typical omnivore diet, you have virtually no chance of getting scurvy. So yeah, that's... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was so bamboozled I forgot to record an outro. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And of course, thank you so much to my members and my patrons. I do post exclusive videos for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and I also do a controversial video for every month.